So tonight we're continuing on with our study in the book of John, and we now transition to John chapter 5. We're looking into the first part here in John chapter 5. We're looking at verses 1 through 15. Again, verses 1 through 15, we're looking at the healing pool. All right, again, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15, which says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is a, now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which Aramaic is called uh, Bethesda, in which is surrounded by five colon by five colonnades. Here are a great number of disabled people used to lie: the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One one who was there had been an invade, invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, learning that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Verse 7. Sir, the unveiled replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is stirred, well, so when the water is stirred, while I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. When Jesus said, to, then Jesus said to him, "Get up, pick up your mat and walk." And once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath, and so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, "It is the Sabbath." The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. Verse 12. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick up and walk? Verse 13. The man who was who was healed had no idea who it was, So Jesus, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd, and that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made, who had made him well. So, we first see tonight that Jesus is interacting with this, with this man, a man who is most just disabled. We see the word unveiled here in in the Bible here. Now, some translations might just say disabled, and which is fine. That's just how the description of this man. Now, one thing we don't something we don't know is that we don't know if this man had uh this was something he was born with, or if it happened while he was a child or anything like that. So we don't know when it happened, we just know that he had been disabled for 38 years, as we see in verse 5. So now at the beginning here, we do see that Jesus is coming to Jerusalem for some type of Jewish festival, a feast. We don't know which one. We just know it is important for him to be there. So we see then um, at the, the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem. Now the Sheep Gate, for those who don't know, the Sheep Gate is the place where um, sheep would be placed, the ones that are meant to be sacrificed to. That's where they would keep these particular sheep, this particular specialty sheep pen, in a way, the sheep gate. And this is in Jerusalem. And near the sheep gate, we have this, um, we have this pool here. Um, now with this particular, now the location, it's near the temple. All right. So it's somewhere near the temple. So um, it's about like northeast part of where the temple is in Jerusalem. So um, that's probably where it would, it was located. Now this pool, it had apparently it had these special healing qualities. All right, that's what at least these myths had. And so what happened was is that people were sitting there, lying there, hoping to get healed. They want to be rid of their the this this issue that they had. The lame, the blind, the paralyzed. They were hoping for just something. And so 
Think about it. So I want you to think about the, this pool, okay? I want you to think about a pool. And I'm not talking about like like a hot tub or like, I'm not talking about like this little pool where it's like you think of like the summer vacation. People are just splashing and having fun. I want you to think about a pool, but people are sitting around it that are just like just probably tired, probably just in pain or maybe just miserable that's probably the best way to describe it just miserable just hoping for something to happen for their life to change for the blind to see the lame walk and we see this man here for 38 years this man has been disabled paralyzed or something that has caused him to just sit there and just be among those who are just miserable very sad place it's not this summer vacation type of pool it's a place where people are just miserable and so we see jesus goes up to this man this man who's been here been here for a while has been disabled for 38 years now um when we think about it like it's like jesus just picks a random person out of, and picked i'm using that term lightly in terms of picking this particular person it's like he didn't be like eeny meeny miny mo it wasn't like that jesus or already knew him he already knew who he was all right because i want you to reflect back on the time with um uh, with nathaniel he said i already knew you under the tree and so he jesus had already known this guy here he goes up to this man, Jesus goes up to this man. And says, Do you want to get well? I mean, what kind of question is that? Like we see it as just like, yes, we he does want to get better. Of course. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about, man? What type of question are you asking here? But we don't see that type of response here. Instead, we, what we do see is in verse 7, it says, Sir, as he was replying, I have no one to help me help me into the pool when the water is stirred while i'm trying to get in someone else goes down ahead of me in a way this guy is trying to make excuses it's just like look i have no one to help me like i can't get in fast enough probably there's other maybe the there are some people there who are disabled like maybe they have like a friend there that like carries them in into the pool, but in no one is able to help him out. And so he's just creating excuses and he's just, <coughs> excuse me, he's just accepted it. But the problem that he also has is, well, he can't really hold a job. That's one because it's like because he's disabled. So it's just like no one's going to really hire him. But also people are not going to really associate themselves with this type of person because people would think, oh, you did something wrong and God cursed you. And like God, you made God so angry. This happened to you. But that's not the case. And we'll talk about that later on in tonight. And so the man's just accepted it. And then we see Jesus reply to this in verse 8. He says, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. Wow. Another miracle of Jesus. We see this healing of this, this disabled man. And it was immediately, it didn't take, it didn't take like, oh, give it like 10, 15 minutes for you to start walking. It was instant. Wow. And so the man picked up his mat and walked. But we see later on in verse nine that uh, this became a little bit of an issue. And I'm not necessarily talking about like, um, Jesus healing someone, but he did it 
on the Sabbath. We see this here at the end of verse 9. The day on which he took this took place was a Sabbath, verse 10. And so the Jews said to the man who had um who had been healed, is the it is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mats. Verse 11. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. You see, there's a couple things here that was an issue for the Jewish law. The first one is that, well, you can't heal on the Sabbath. That's You can't do that. But also, we see that a man is carrying his mat. That's considered a burden. You see, you're not allowed to carry burdens on the Sabbath. And carrying a mat was considered as a burden. Now, I don't know how much this mat supposedly like weight, like what the weight was of this mat, but like you weren't allowed to carry anything because it was considered to be working on the Sabbath. All right. That was wrong. That was a no, no. All right. You can't work on the Sabbath. But then the man just replied, look, the guy who healed me just said, pick up my mat and walk. So I walked. And so it's like, he healed me. I'm going to do what he says. So, <laughs> But he couldn't tell, like, who healed him. He didn't know his name. He just healed him and left, in a way. It's just like, I don't know his name. See, the reason why Jesus left immediately, we see this um, in verse 13. The man who had healed had no idea who it was. For Jesus had slipped away into the crowd where that was there. See, the reason why Jesus slipped away is because he knew it was going to be, like, chaotic. That was the first, that was like a big thing. So he knew it was going to be a really chaotic and there was going to be a big problem. So it's just like he healed this one man and he left. All right. So he healed the one man and he left. And then later on, we see in verses um, 14 and 15 that Jesus interacts with the same man once again. Verse 14. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Now, people have thought, oh, is Jesus implying that the reason why this guy was, um, he was disabled, was it because of something that he did? Was it because of his sin? No, it's not it. it like, like, just because someone is disabled, blind, deaf, whatever, um, that doesn't mean that they made God so angry that God then sh shot down like a bolt of lightning and then they became blind or disabled. It's not talking about that at all. Like, but the reason why Jesus did that is because, well, most likely the man did sin throughout his life, probably once or twice or whatever, because, well, the only perfect person who ever walked the earth was well, Jesus himself. But the job of Jesus was to say, hey, stop sinning. That was his job. Like, to seek and save the lost, to save people. His job is to save, to die for us on the cross and, ri and ri rise again on the third day. And so like, people today, which I don't know why people do this today, but people say, oh, no, Jesus doesn't talk about stop to tell us to stop sinning. He does right there. It's plain as day. So just if people say like, well, Jesus doesn't ever talk about stop sinning, Point to them to this to this section here, John chapter 5. Jesus tell this man straight up, stop sinning. And he says, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And he's not necessarily talking about physical issues. He's talking about spiritual. All right. He would end in a place that is not good, people. He's like, hey, I want you to go to heaven. Don't sin. And so with all this going on, what is our applications for tonight? The biggest one is Jesus uses the broken to do some of his greatest work. We see this man here just disabled. He's lost hope. He's basically just given up on life. But Jesus goes to him, heals him. But he also reminds him to stop sinning. Don't sin anymore, okay? He wants him to follow him.
uh, not like the disciples, but to praise him, to worship him, to, to praise God. And I know sometimes it might feel like life is just difficult, life is tough. And just trying to understand why is God or what is God doing here? Why has he selected me to do certain things? Sometimes it's almost like I'm not worthy to do stuff. I'm not worthy to do this work. The work that pleases him, praises him. But yet he uses us. He's chosen us to do this work. Friends, we might not, some of us might not have these physical burdens. But he has chosen us, whether if we are blind, deaf, lame, disabled, whatever. Even if we don't have any like if we, even if we're not paralyzed, it doesn't matter. God has chosen all of us to do his work. Let us pray.